Long enough to cover the subject and short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to Out of My League. I'm Nick Diaz. Boy, how the news day shifts quickly. One thing that I've enjoyed about Brian Kelly so far is that his staff hirings have been efficient and quiet. Not a lot of hoopla, not a lot of pressers, not a lot of difficulty identifying and then hiring uh, candidates or finding any bridge gaps or roadblocks like Ed Ogeron always had. But, unfortunately, Brian Kelly may have just found his first roadblock. Ian Rappaport is reporting that Sean McVay, the head coach of the Los Angeles Rams, has requested to interview Cortez Hankton, LSU's new passing game coordinator and wide receivers coach, to be not the passing game coordinator for the Rams, but to be the offensive coordinator for the defending Super Bowl champions. It's kind of a big deal. Cortez Hankton, for those of you who don't remember, he was the passing game coordinator at Georgia last year, and they led the SEC in yards per attempt. I did not know that. Um, Now, before any of you shit your pants, Ian Rappaport did say that this is simply a request and that Sean McVay is known to search far and wide and cast a wide net and likes to interview a lot of different candidates. He likes to look over every stone and and see if anything's there. So that doesn't mean LSU is losing a key piece to their coaching staff just yet. And yes, this is a key piece to LSU's coaching staff. One, because he's a New Orleans guy, and you need NOLA guys on this staff for recruiting, even if you do have uh, Frank Wilson. But the second part is, is that he's also very, very, very well respected in coaching circles. Like, very well respected. And the market is proving that because Sean McVay wants to talk to him. Brian Kelly is paying him over $900,000 just to coach wide receivers. And for those of you who are wondering, that's not typical, even in SEC staffs. It's not. And I will tell you something else. Cortez Hankin may very well accept this request to interview for the job. And honestly... You may not want to hear this, but he should. He'd be stupid not to. He is being requested to be the offensive coordinator for the defending Super Bowl champions. The last three offensive coordinators for the Los Angeles Rams under Sean McVay, all of them have gotten NFL head coaching jobs. Hell, the Bengals head coach, Zach Taylor, He was just his quarterback coach under Sean McVay, and he went straight to being an uh, an NFL head coach for the Bengals. There's a joke around the NFL that if you've had a cup of coffee with Sean McVay, you're going to get an NFL head coaching job. So he would be stupid. Cortez Cortez Hankton would be stupid not to consider the interview. But that doesn't mean he will get offered the job or doesn't even mean he'll accept the job. He's been in college this whole time coaching. Um, he, he loves it. He loves it. And he's finally back home coaching in Louisiana. And from my understanding, that was a big pull for him coming to LSU from Georgia, which is basically a lateral move. I would also remind people, for those of you who don't know, and not a lot of people do realize this, but former LSU quarterback Brandon Harris is the director of recruiting at Texas. Brandon Harris, last offseason, was offered, not requested or interviewed, but was offered to be the assistant quarterback coach last year for Sean McVay. And Brandon Harris turned it down to be a shadow staff member at Texas. It's not unheard of. Offered. He was offered. Not requested for an interview, but he was offered. So, would I be worried or nervous if you're an LSU fan? Right now, not really, honestly, no. But this, at the same time, this would absolutely be a hit to Brian Kelly's staff if he left. And it would be a, you know, a very bad time. Not the worst time, but a bad time. But at the, also, there's no reason to think right now that he's a front runner for the job or that he'll even accept the request of the interview for the job. Okay, I really usually don't like to do these things, but since it's opening day for LSU baseball... I th- Thought I'd give it a shot. Um, The big question that everyone seems to be asking this whole time is, how far will this team go? And I always say, well, I don't know. Because I think the better question is, how far 
can this team go? In other words, if they reach their full potential this season, what is the limit to their success? Well, you don't really have to look that far to find a comparison for this LSU team. Matter of fact, all you have to do is look at last year with Jay Johnson. Jay Johnson's Arizona team last year had the number one offense in the country in every statistical category. But the bullpen, they had little depth and really no true ace. And they rotated a lot of guys in and out, uh, sort of played the analytical game when it came to using relief pitchers. Sound familiar? It's a lot what we expect this LSU team to be. And that team, last year for Arizona, they went to Omaha, and they went 1-2 and two and were eliminated in three games. The difference, though, I will say this before I make my prediction. The difference between that Arizona team and this LSU team is that I believe this LSU team, in their bullpen, they have more talent than that Arizona team did last season. More, much more talent, much more potential. Arizona last year, for those of you who don't remember, they lost to Vanderbilt in the College World Series in extra innings on an error. Pitcher for Arizona threw a bad ball, catcher didn't catch it, and Vandy walks off with a win in extra innings. And watching that game, honestly, Arizona was the better team. Like, they were. But the pitching staff just didn't have enough arms to really compete, and they lost it. Arizona should have won the game, though. So maybe they should have gone 2-2 two and two instead of 1-2 and two in Omaha. And I don't think they would have gone much further beyond that because their bullpen just wasn't that deep and they used them all up in extra innings in that game against Vanderbilt. But I do think Arizona would have gone 2-2 two and two last season in Omaha. So I believe this LSU team, if they reach their maximum potential, I'm talking about their maximum potential in the bullpen and in their pitching staff, I think this LSU team can sneak into a top eight seed, which means they will host a regional and super regional, and they will go to Omaha, and I believe that they can win at least two games in Omaha. That's it. But there's just not enough veteran pitchers on this staff to really make me think they can go further than that. And that may disappoint a lot of you listening, considering this lineup has potentially, well not potentially, they pretty much have officially four future first round draft picks and probably three, two or three second rounders just in their lineup, all the way to the seven and eight hole. Best in the country. One of the best we've ever seen at LSU. But at the end of the day, it all goes back to pitching. But it also wouldn't shock me. It wouldn't shock me if LSU at the same time, wouldn't shock me if they won the national championship this year. It's baseball. Stranger things have happened. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or follow me on Twitter and Facebook in the description link below.